has now come for uh, the uh, listener to understand about uh, what exactly is fork and how exactly practically it is working it makes a lot of sense to see the code a walk through practically and then to try it out to see the uh, significant understanding of how exactly it works now here the users are uh, taken through the code walk through first and then we will be explained with the way the code works and then finally we can understand the complete uh, methodology of the working so here is the complete work, complete code for your reference gedit is the editor that anybody can use it easily uh, for uh, um, it is gedit is the editor that someone can use like notepad and uh, linux the keyword or the command used to, to open the gedit is just type gedit followed by some file name that you have already available there in front of you now if you see it uh, closely you have the clear commands uh, given over there in the top of the code there are clear commands for you to read it this is how the codes are expected to be written very clearly for someone to understand the code and there is something called as man page in linux and unix environment the man pages will strongly help you to identify what are all the header files that you really require to include to be included in the file that you are using so or to be included for the system call that you are using so for me to understand what are all the header files that i need to call for using fork i need to use man space fork f o r k so that it will give me a detailed web page just as uh, someone can see here i'll open another terminal for you to understand so it's easy so just open a terminal type man f o r k it will now get the manual entry for the complete fork here someone can see i must definitely include stdio.h we all know that and then other than that i need to include unistd.h this is the file uh, this is the header file that i will have to include for me to <coughs> it is very important for uh, someone to understand the uh, flow of uh, uh, the code first and then to get in into the way it works so first what we are going to see is how the code for fork is written i have explained theoretically the complete details about the fork but i have not shown you the code so here is a stage where i can reveal you how the code exactly looks like one can understand the way that i have written the code i have used enough comments in any code that i uh, write so as to understand any time when i refer the code later and most importantly you need to pull out the right header files for you to make the system calls work so here what i mean a system call is fork is the system call that i am currently referring to and i need to know what are all the right exact header files for me to use before i call them so how do i know it i can use terminal and this is the terminal so i can open another terminal since this terminal is already occupied i am just opening a terminal and there is something called as a man page in linux and unix versions man what is the system call that you are going to use fork if i type it it will tell me complete details about the fork system call in this case you can clearly see it says that the header files to be included is unistd.h and that's what i have included here and then stdio.h is the standard input output file so i am including that now coming into the code detail in a detailed manner i am creating a integer here return which will collect the return value of the function fork or the system call to be precisely called as fork this fork will now return two return values one will be greater than 0 another one will be equivalent to 0 as i already told you equal to 0 will be the child process and greater than 0 will be representing the parent process so now it's simple here for the reader to understand the first part if the return value is greater than 0 <coughs> i could say that it is the parent process and i can get the process id of the process through the function get pid and then i am closing it off i am saying that if the return value is equal to 0 it is the child process and then its pid can be obtained through get pid and the child's parent is available here and its pid can be obtained through get pid so this is very simple code i am just calling the right appropriate header files and then i call the function call fork or the system call fork and the return value will be collected in ret and the return if it is greater than 0 it is the parent process and if it is equal to 0 it is child process so which one will get executed first 
definitely I cannot tell you now. It's based on the kernel. So whichever process gets the time first will get executed first. But if you are so particular about making the parent process execute first, you can make it by making the child sleep for about 5 seconds or 10 seconds or something like that. Here you can see the execution screenshot now. I kept my files at desktop. So I'm going to that CD code. I'm getting into CD complete this first. LS is the command that I need to use. I have got the file by name fork here. I am going to compile it now. That is my highest priority and the task for the moment. GCC hyphen O fork fork dot C file name. I know there there is not there is not any mistake in this. There is no mistake available in this code. So I will have to now run this fork. I am now running it. So you can see that first the parent process has got executed, then the child process has executed. So this is the way the parent ID everything is allocated. You can see that here the ID is 3651 and the successive ID is 3652. Since the parent is run first it gets the first ID, then the child comes it gets the second ID. So this is how we have created two processes out of one process. Here the input process is the parent process itself wherein the output process will be the process that is newly created along with the parent process being coming as a part of the output. It is a very simple coding. This coding will come with us for a long way now. We will have to use this coding methodology uh, towards understanding the complete piping unnamed piping scenario which I am going to tell you shortly. I hope this is understandable. The understanding is very important. You need to go through the code once again and you need to type the code to get a better understanding is completely preferable.